Hello everybody, I want to start with a new series of video sessions I produce and I want to focus here on some of the fundamentals we need to know in order to drive our Tesla cold or our energy systems. So the subject today will be isolation transformer. What is it good for? Where can we use it? What is the benefit? Um, and also power amplifications, that means Everybody knows when when you want to work on a in, uh, with solid state technologies, you have a signal. You need to drive the signal to your transistor, MOSFET, IGBT, and there are various technologies or so let's say topologies which are in the market. And there is a lot of uncertainty I have seen about what system to use. There are examples in the market also what has been used and I want to, want to bring you a little bit more transparency around that subject. We'll give you guidance and we'll also produce professional built um, PCPs with this kind of technologies which you can um, purchase from me for a fraction of the price. But let's get started. Starting off with my new DC power supply which was on my agenda to build a couple of years ago. I bought all the bits and pieces, never came around. Now it's a time. I said I had to do it. And what is that? So that's literally an analog device compared to the digital devices which are frequency driven or IGBTs or MOSFET powers and they have limited current. Well, that is not the case here. Isolation transformer you see on this side. What does that mean? That means that the primary circuit or the primary winding is not connected to the secondary winding. That means I have complete isolation. So then the standard process, you rectify it and then I have a battery of high powered um, quality um, uh, electrolytic capacitors, EPCOS. Just to be on the safe side, I added two of them which gives me 800 900 volt so the system has rating of 1 to 1.6 1.7 that means let me show it here when you um, for 240 volt it delivers 400 volt AC that means rectified RMS 560 volt two and a half thousand watt and believe me when I tell you this is a damn smooth DC power supply I have ever built and it works a treat. So I'm going to use it in the first stage for driving MOSFETs, IGBTs which can handle 500 volt and then there will be a second stage you will see here maybe one of you saw that I used it in the old form where I used normal, um, normal um, voltage doubler and so on but they were very very inefficient, had a lot of ripple and literally destroyed my my MOSFETs. This one has no problem at all. So you have the first line will go 500 volt, maximum 5 amp, amp gives me 2.5 kilowatt. The second line will be in the second stage where I take um, um, the output of the system and derive it via um, a special new way of flyback technology some of you might know it's that existing. So this is from Panasonic um, a microwave oven transformer. How surprising. So this is literally um, built via IGDPs as you can see here. You have your your, your um, wheeling diode and you have your rectifier here on one of the same I think or oh, that's live. And here a typical flyback and a very very nice one so this system produces 1200 watt so I'm going to use one or two of them and will energize them that, that, that would give me around 4 to 5 kilowatt DC currently and also 2500 watt second phase so all this good um, DC power supply needs to find a uh, purposeful use so and here I used um, a special setup, a special configuration 
I have on my website linked um, a documentation about all t sorts of topologies which exist on the market and I tested most of them and this one is a very efficient one and I use this one and because there are very little components it's actually very cheap to build that so this is based on an IRFP 450 that delivers you 190 watt it, it uh, can handle 500 volt but of course um, we go to safety margin 250 volt and not higher than 500 milliamp so this little pulse transformer is an isolation transformer as well so what you saw in my power supply the big one is here replicated as a small one it is based on a toroid and it's in a small version looking like that so these are various um, systems I tested some of them are good some of them have too many spikes or distorts um, the waveform um, so these cores are actually very expensive cores I bought it from specialists I used it for my stern design um, two years ago because their permeability is extremely high so they gives you a they gonna gonna link the indict, um, a mutual inductance quite nicely between the windings. So coming back, so this one is literally the same as a big one. I have here the possibility of one primary in, and can have two secondaries. So if I want to have um, a half bridge or full bridge um, amplifier stage, which I will show in later videos, I would use only two of them and then have four outputs to each couple of um, half bridge if you want. On the driving side it's a totem pole driver so I used before the TCP as uh, a TC4420 CPA so that's a 429, 422, 421 so the 420 had 6 amp um, power rating and this one has 9 amp power rating however the way it's constructed there's a very low current draw and efficiency is very high. Then, there's this, um, then the isolated part starts here. So there is no connectivity. So grounding from here to here is not existing. So that's floating. So on this side, grounding goes to the power supply here on an on a amplif amplification side. So this little circuit here, so I excluded here the little um, transistor to, just to show you. So this circuit here, what it does, it is actually removing the reminding, the reminder of um, potential differential from the um, gate and, 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 and sinks it down to 0.7 volts, that is a, that's a diode uh, forward voltage, 07 volts, that's the maximum I can get, but that's enough to switch off um, the MOSFET. Very efficient, not getting warm at all, that means this little um, heat sink is more than capable to deal with the heat because of the re reduction of um, gate current which remains on the system, it removes also um, the heat. That means it runs very, very cool, even with 250, 300 volt, no problem whatsoever. So, if you want to increase that or other systems, then of course it would have um, an airflow system like a fan you would um, integrate. So, this system here is, is spread it out, it will be much smaller on a professional built um, PCP. Now, let's start and have a look uh, a little bit on the waveform. Um, see how that performs. So let's start with a standard signal as you can see here very important twisted pair to avoid any kind of stray capacitance influencing the signal so that is the TTL um, signal um, it has the same restriction 3 volt maximum so we could just show you the standard signal here on system 2.3 to volt max that is expected value so that is the signal coming in to the driver side now oh, let's start up power we go in now to the output side have a look
8 volts. So that's that's one of the things which is important. So the isolation transformer here is one to one. And we don't want any kind of amplification, otherwise we would have to clamp it down with a with a diode. So the IFP 450 can handle 20 volt. So with with 8 volt, I'm completely in a, in, in a range. As you can see that's going to change when I change the voltage here. But I checked even with 12 volt, and as you can see, only 50 milliamp. Um, the efficiency is good enough. So here at the moment, you see with 6, 7 volt, that would be RMS about yeah, um, 12, 13 volts. That's enough to to start um, the system. Going back to 15. So that is the signal coming out before it goes through the transistor. That's a PNP transistor, just a standard PNP transistor. Now that's a signal coming from um, the transistor. It's a much smoother read. Let me stop that for a single. As you can see, it's a bit smaller, the signal, so it's only 8, 9 volt. However, it is clean because it removes it removes all um, the reminding or the reminder of energy from the gate, and that looks looks very very good. So you have a 10 ohm 10 ohm resistor to the gate. Important, you need to have some kind of resistance. You can't drive directly. That would imbalance the system and we would also call failure of the MOSFET earlier down um, in production. So 10 ohm here, you have 1 kilo ohm between the secondary primary, a uh, secondary uh, primary pin, first pin. Um, and then you have um, just a 1 and 4148 diode going forward here. 